Welcome back to Gun and Shot TV, and uh, I've talked about a couple different Winchester products. As you can see, I'm a big Winchester fan. I also like 22s, and uh, I also like copies of Winchester, so I'm going to kind of bring it all together today, and I'm going to talk about gallery guns. So what this is, this is a Winchester 1890. Um, this was a Browning designed 22 pump action rifle. Now Browning actually designed a pump ac or a pump action shotgun first. Um, he designed what would become the Winchester 1897 before the Winchester 1887. But Winchester at the time said everything we have has a lever, so put a lever on it. So he designed the 1887, but he really liked the pump action design. So in 1890, he talked to the fine folks at Winchester into making a pump action 22. Now. Quite often you'll see these guns, and I'm going to bring it a little bit closer here, you'll see them described as a gallery gun. And the reason for that is, um, as you can see, the gun is a takedown. It's got this big screw here. It also is a pump, so you're working the action manually. So you can fire pretty much any power load, and it'll still cycle. So back around the turn of the century, there were shooting galleries at county fairs, at uh, boardwalks, at amusement parks, or even in busy city areas, there would be just a shooting gallery stall. Um, now you don't see them that much anymore, um, and if you do, they're either BB guns or light guns, but, you know, back up until the 50s and 60s, it was common to use live fire 22. Now, even places like Disneyland, when they opened, had real 22 rifles that you could shoot in their shooting galleries up until, I think, the 60s. Um, that's one of those I've seen some pictures online and stuff of the actual shooting gallery at Disney. So, um, you really don't see anything like this anymore um, because, you know, danger. But the thing you have to realize is back then, they weren't shooting regular 22 ammo. They were shooting 22 gallery loads, which were actually compressed... Um, lead shavings, kind of like a blazer safety slug. So they would hit the target and kind of just turn to dust. Um, not accurate long range, not super powerful, but uh, they were pretty safe for splashback. Nowadays we'd have to worry about that powder being inhaled and the lead dust poisoning someone. Uh, you know, back then no one really cared about that stuff. There was lead in the gasoline and lead pretty much everywhere. So, to give you an idea what I'm talking about, let me show you uh, a clip out of a movie. This is called Annie Oakley. Um, and this is a scene where the, uh, the love interest of Annie Oakley, I think it's Toby something, um, he's dejected and I think, I can't remember if his eyesight, something happened, he got washed out of the uh, Wild West show. So, he is uh, down and out on his luck and... Uh, here he is running a shooting gallery when uh, there's a surprise visitor. I mean, that was uh, a typical shooting gallery. There was some clay pipes to shoot at, stuff like that. Um, really interesting, and like I said, that's just a, supposed to be a downtown street in New York. Um, and that probably was a real functioning shooting gallery. For another idea, and this is more of a amusement park themed one. I think this is also based in New York. This is a clip from the movie Buffalo Bill. And uh, this is supposedly um, another scene where someone who's down and out on their luck uh, tries to uh, win something at a shooting gallery. In this case, it's Buffalo Bill trading in his Medal of Honor, which in actuality, Buffalo Bill did win a Medal of Honor. Now, he won it at a time when uh, he was a scout, so he wasn't actually in the Army, but he won a Medal of Honor. And later, Congress rescinded that Medal of Honor and took it away from him, so I thought that was kind of an interesting tidbit. He's one of the few non-Army personnel that won a Medal of Honor. So uh, not only was a world-famous showman and uh, bison hunter and all that stuff, but he actually did win. So as you can see, like I said, they were, they were pretty interesting uh, and pretty common back in the day. Um, and these were one of the prime guns. Like I said, they were shooting that sintered low-power gallery load. Um, so you could load up your 15 rounds or whatever, and... Uh, just pump it. These don't have a disconnect, so if you held the trigger down and pumped, it'll keep firing as long as you hold that trigger down. They're kind of interesting because the action does lock up. It's got these uh, projections that stick out on the side of the action that lock it. Now, the very first 1890 Winchester didn't have that. It just uses a lock on the firing pin. Well, these added that for safety, the later models, and the firing pin is the latch. So if you want to cycle the action, you can either drop the hammer or you can just push in on that firing pin and it'll unlock. So this one's interesting. This is actually one that was uh, given to my father by a family friend. 
Now this is an original 1890. It's got a second generation um, receiver, the rear half, and then the front half is off third generation. So the, the original is like 1901 or something like that. And then the front half is actually from the 20s. Now if you take this thumb screw on the back here, the whole thing pops in half. And that's how there's two separate pieces. Um, this one's interesting because it's chambered and 22 long, but at some point this has had a bunch of different work done to it. As you can see, there's uh, some scope mounts on the barrel that were tapped in at some point. This terrible low quality scope mount that's been tapped in the receiver. Um, someone at some point has rechambered it into 22 long rifle. Um, also, the person that uh, my dad got it from said that the barrel, it's hard to see on video, but there's kind of like a weird bend in the barrel that was straightened. He sent it back to Winchester because it wasn't shooting straight. And they said they heated the barrel up and pounded it straight on an anvil. Now, I don't think Winchester would do something like that anymore, but back in the day, and possibly that's why the barrel and frame don't match. I'm not sure. This gun is kind of a question mark. But it does shoot okay. The scope on it is a very antique one that uh, still for some reason works, but it looks like someone has changed, changed some of the fittings out with just hardware at some point. So definitely not going to hold zero for my opinion. But uh, I like this gun, but it is an antique and it is very old. As you can see, it's got a crescent butt plate. It is a an original 1890 but Winchester made a couple different variations of this they came out with a cheaper model I believe it was a 1906 with a rounded barrel um, to simplify machining and to make the gun cheaper well that one didn't actually sell that great the 1890 still sold pretty well um, so there was a couple different variations and they ended up making a 62 which was kind of an amalgamation of the 1890 and that cheaper model and I actually have a Rossi clone of that so it's got a rounded barrel and it's got a flat plastic buttstock. I think the actual Winchester 62s had metal. But uh, this is a pretty faithful clone. Um, I picked this up for, I think it was 150 bucks or something at a, at a gun shop. It's got some, some funny wear to the bluing over here where somebody got a little rusty and scratched a little bit. But all in all, a pretty good uh, copy of a 62. Like I said, that was kind of a, a mix of the 1890 and 1907 and all those different guns but they're great guns they're fun to shoot and uh, I'm still working on this one I just got it and I'm having some problems with the extractor it was leaving shells in the chamber and that jams up the work so you gotta take out the screw and take it down so I went in and I removed the extractor I gave it a little more tension well now it's a little too tight so sometimes it doesn't actually let go of the cartridges so I'm still gonna play with it but I'm gonna take these two down to the range and we'll, we'll shoot them a little bit at my uh, homemade shooting gallery and uh, give you an idea how they fire. Okay, so I'm down at my range. I've got this Winchester 1890. Um, like I said, it's been rechambered, so the barrel has a twist rate for 22 long, which is a lighter bullet, so it's a slower twist rate than is needed to stabilize a 22 long rifle. But it is uh, been rechambered, so it does fire okay. It's just not going to be a super great long range gun. And like I said, at one point the barrel is straightened. It's a whole nightmare. Um, but it is still fun to shoot. It's a fun little gun. The big problem is the shells eject straight up. Well, you got a scope there. So it doesn't always feed uh, because the old shell gets stuck in the action. But we'll give it a shot and we'll throw some rounds down range. Oh, we already had one jam on us here.
I have to drop my iPro, which is completely fogged and I can't see anything. Okay. So not a good shooter as far as I need to mess with these sights and get them zeroed in, but it uh, does shoot okay. I, I really kind of want to dump this scope because this scope's pretty shitty anyways. So uh, man, maybe you'll see a uh, Winchester 1890 scope mount on Gunbroker someday, and this might be this one because it's pretty shitty. So I've got that Winchester 62 clone now, and I'm going to shoot this too. Now it uh, still has a little bit of an extractor issue. Like I said, I didn't quite get the tension right, but... Uh, Take it, see how it shoots. I haven't also adjusted sights or done anything with it, so can't guarantee it's going to be that great, but it's kind of a work in progress at this point. So there you have it, um, some Winchester or Winchester clone gallery guns. Uh, if you've got a nice gallery gun, you kind of know how much fun they are to shoot. They're not the best, uh, you know, modern rifle as far as they don't feed from a magazine. you got a tube mag rather than a removable box mag. And uh, they're, you know, a little bit slow and old and finicky, but they're definitely awesome guns and fun to shoot. And uh, give one a shot sometime and you just might end up taking it home. For Gun and Shot TV, this is Chris saying thanks for watching and have a great day.